Um, hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 13 in the Dewey Rheims Bible, but Psalm 14 in the RSV. On to the end. A Psalm for David. Description of the psalm. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Some people believe that they can justify the claim that God doesn't exist, but they only believe this because of their own unwillingness to listen to wisdom. This is how fools are described in Proverbs 1.7. They are corrupt, and are become abominable in their ways. There is none that doth good, no, not one. This refers to fools. They may sometimes do things that are objectively good, but they never do as well as they could if they would open their minds to wise teachings. Their foolishness also leads to horrible biases and corruption. The Lord hath looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there be any that understand and seek God. Not that God doesn't already know whether anyone seeks or understands him. This verse is meant to describe how God always keeps a watchful eye on people and never loses sight of our actions or our intentions. They are all gone aside. At the time that this psalm was written, every last human being had committed some kind of sin. They are become unprofitable together. The futility of human life and labor apart from God is recognized here. There is none that doth good, no, not one. This refers to our inability to perfectly do the will of God because of sin, or to the fact that no person can cause good things to happen directly without the help of God, perhaps both. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they act deceitfully. The poison of asps is under their lips. A sepulchre is a tomb. When a tomb is open, a foul stench comes out of it from the rotting corpse. So this part refers to how foul things come out of people's mouths. The first example given is deceit the worst thing that can come from anyone's mouth because it can lead people astray. Poison, in turn, may refer to how lies harm the ability of people to learn the truth, just as a snake's poison harms the person bitten by one. It may also refer to how lies can be used to harm people more immediately through false accusations. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. While it's easy to feel bitter if you live a life full of suffering, it's not an appropriate response if you believe that God will eventually settle things and wants to save you from suffering and misery. The best response is hope and longing, not bitterness and anger. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and unhappiness in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. Because of their hopelessness and bitterness, Sinners don't trust in the promise of eternal life, so they end up staking everything on their own immediate success in this life. Because of this, in desperation they lash out at their fellow man, causing devastation and bloodshed wherever they go, because, after all, there is no fear of God before their eyes. They are neither encouraged by the promise of God for heavenly bliss, nor are they afraid of being punished for their evil doing. Shall not all they know that work iniquity, who devour my people as they eat bread, Evildoers victimize the innocent as if they had no more rights than a loaf of bread does. They do this because they're ignorant of some very important things. They have not called upon the Lord. There have they trembled for fear where there was no fear. Unbelievers worry themselves over inconsequential issues in this life, when they should be concerned with their relationship with God. For the Lord is in the just generation. You have confounded the counsel of the poor man, but the Lord is his hope. You, in this verse, refers to evildoers. This portion of the psalm says that wicked people cause trouble for the poor and needy, but God can save them from evil. People who have hope in God are justified, since only the power of God can truly protect people. Who shall give out of Sion the salvation of Israel? When the Lord shall have turned away the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Only God can save people from those who do wrong against them, and when he does, it'll cause tremendous happiness. 
Again, the pattern of this psalm begins with the negative and concludes in the positive. Ignorant evildoers deny God and cause harm, but in the end, there's no way to outdo the will of God, and the faithful are happy and saved. Uh, that's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.